Here we are. On the road. Oh, yeah. Well, you're going to be on the road again, but I'm not. <laughs> well, yeah, literally, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a there's a holiday weekend coming up in the United States, mm -hmm. for those unfamiliar. Um, Labor Day. So we're going to go up to upstate New York, drink some wine. It will be totally different than what we do on normal weekends here. <laughs> I don't know why we're doing this. This is something my brother-in-law and sister have been planning for a while. Well, hopefully it'll be finger licking good. Uh, I wanted to talk to you. Uh-oh. Briefly. No, no, no nothing bad. Um, <laughs> about this pie hole thing again. I, mm -hmm. I feel like we might have talked about this offline. I don't know if this came up during the show, but I had this experience about a week ago where maybe I had to describe this. I was reading an article on my iPad off of a feed. It doesn't, you know, if you read like Google News or any feed, right? Any news feed, you, you click on an article. What it does is it loads the web page inside a web view in the app. So you get the web site. So that means you get all the ads and all the animated nonsense and everything. So it's not like a reader view, which I would mm -hmm. love, by the way. In this particular article, had really short paragraphs of text, and in between each was a giant tower ad that was an animated video that you could not disable. Like you couldn't pause it. It just would just play. So it's sitting there. You're trying to read something, and mm -hmm. it's doing this. You know, Those kinds of ads are annoying in general. Most apps you can scroll the text enough so that it's kind of off screen. You can actually read without distraction, but because there were so many of them and it was literally the same ad, I could see two of these things on screen at the same time with a tiny strip of text in the middle. And I was like, this is enough, you know? And, um, I looked at, you know, we, I know you did the pie hole thing. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. I ended up going with a, I'll call it a service based uh, solution of a similar stripe called in this case, next DNS, although there are others as well. I, I would say the one, well, the, the advantages of this over like a pie hole is a, your devices go out into the world and they're still configured for this. If you configured on the device and then you don't have to maintain the hardware or worry about it, mm -hmm. you know, quite wonder why things aren't working, et cetera. Um, I don't understand why more people don't do this. <laughs> this is like the greatest thing in the world. And you sort of, it's kind of a weird thing to explain, but I, you know me well enough to know to imagine every morning me getting up and sort of yelling at my screen because it's doing stuff that I can't stand. It's really hard for me to imagine that. Yeah. Really hard. Like and I difficult. do this every day, like for years. <clears throat> and of course it's escalated over time. Mm -hmm. And this isn't like I, I, people misconstrue certain things, you know, it's, this is not like, like they'll be like, well, your website's terrible, Paul. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, but we offer a premium option that you can pay for it. That's not that expensive. That gets rid of all that stuff. Right. Uh, most sites do not offer that. And it's also not the content creator's fault. They have no choice. Uh, ads don't pay. So they there's a proliferation of these things. They make them more annoying. I think the, the reason they did that thing I described was because just in the course of tapping through the article, you might misclick one of these things and get an ad view out of it, and that benefits them. And this is the terrible world we live in, you know? I wish there was a better way. I wish ads weren't tracking you in the background. That's the other thing, right? This isn't just like a visual annoyance. Mm -hmm. You understand this is done to track you, right? That's what they really are. They're trackers. Anyway, I um, this is easy to set up. I can't put it on my router mm. uh, because I have a mesh network and Google Fi doesn't basically, they, they just don't have the controls to let you do this. But actually that might work out for the best because the truth is I don't really want this on everything. Um, I want it on my mobile devices. That's where the annoyance is. You know, mm -hmm. I I use a secure private web browser that, that blocks all trackers and nonsense anyway called Brave. But you can get extensions for Chrome or Edge or whatever it is you choose to use. And you should, right? And again, it's not about ripping off websites, you know. It's about getting rid of the tracking. It's about getting rid of just what has become an overt annoyance that's everywhere in our lives now that we just silently or in my case not that silently put up with every day you know but i'm curious i guess the thing i'm curious about is how like like you're doing you're literally doing the whole house thing you mm -hmm. have a a device that's between your router and i guess the rest of the yeah it's just a ra it's just a raspberry pi and it's not even between you just 
Yeah, plug it's it just in. on the network. You point it's the just DNS on the network. server yep. to yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have I should know this by now. I can't remember what you don't have an Eero thing. You have something like Eero. You have a Yeah, it's it's uh Amplify H D, which I'm and on is the this a me is well, it a I'll eventually network? replace, but not yet. Yeah. Is it mesh? Yeah. Well yeah, it's mesh. So it you must should be, be able to do it on yours. I don't know There's why. There's something you... about Google Fi so <clears> I've, I've spent a lot of time it, it's they have instructions for doing this. I have. I didn't. I should say. I didn't actually try. I just read mm -hmm. some of the issues that people had, and I thought, you know what, Google. Fi I've had this Google Wi-Fi thing since we moved here, so I've had it for five years now. It's Wi-Fi five. I have issues with Sonos that are caused by Google Wi-Fi, um, which are another thing entirely. And I think. I, I think because of the issues, that, it's it's good in one sense, like it kind of just works for the most part. But mm -hmm. it's it's been problematic for Sonos. And, um, and then I was reading about this and I'm like, you know, this is the type of thing, like I'll ensure that I sell this house and move by spending several hundred dollars on a Wi-Fi 6E mesh network. But I think if, and when I do do this upgrade, mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll look at doing that, you know, maybe I'll look at it again. Although I've also heard, by the way, um, we use an open web, uh, comment system on the site now. And apparently that might run afoul of this as well. And I can't, you know, I can't have that happen. So I got, anyway, it's just something to think about, but I am intrigued by the notion of just every device on your network, not seeing the crap, you mm -hmm. know, do you have like a dashboard? You must have a thing where it's like, you yeah, have you saved. Just, there's a dashboard you can just log into. No, but it must tell you like we've blocked, you know, like brave makes a big point of this. It's like, Hey, we've saved you like oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. The... 10 gigabytes this month and useless data that would have been just tracking you across the internet. Yeah, I can't remember the address. I have it saved in, in my one password. But yeah, you log in and mm -hmm. every once, like initially you log in a bunch because you're trying to figure out there's certain things yeah, you course. don't want blocked that yep. just get blocked. Yeah, and actually, so, so do you remember, uh, what were, were there any particular issues with certain, you know, services or? The only issue that really got annoying, especially mm -hmm. on my wife's side. So if you're on your mobile phone, as opposed to your landline phone, I guess. Um, <laughs> and you search like black shoes and mm -hmm. you go to Google search and at the, at the very top, especially on mobile, there's like a carousel of items. That yeah. It'll show like black shoes from whatever. Clicking those links would not work and it drove my wife nuts. So I had to huh. go in and figure out how to revert that specific link, which you can do. And then that was huh. pretty much solved. That's it. interesting. Okay. Because those are tracking yet. links, effectively, right? They're shopping tracking links is what they are. So they're, by default, blocked. The dumbest thing about this is, I've only been doing this for about a week, and um, I think, somewhere in there. And uh, you, you kind of forget you're doing it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, as, as strongly as I react to terrible things happening on my iPad every single morning, seven days or eight days go by, no, no terrible things happen. <laughs> And I sort of, I, I had this moment the other day where I was like, I, 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 sort of, I forgot I was doing this. Mm -hmm. Like, so I had to grab a device I hadn't configured for this and then do like side by sides where I loaded the things and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, one of them's over here going, bleep, bleep, bleep. you know, the other one's just like text, you know, mm -hmm. graphics from the site. I yep. think I've seen one pop-up video on a mobile website and it had a close button. And the entire, I think that was it. You know? Yep. Yeah, there's no way to block everything. It, it's nearly impossible. Right? If you yes. do, you're going to end up blocking half the stuff you want. So it's, it, there's just a balance. Yeah. I mean, even in our own little company, like one of the things we discovered was that you, I mean, you can be aggressive if you want to be against people who are blocking ads. And we've decided not, not to do that. Right. But there's also, um, there's also ways to embed content on a website that to uh, a blocker look like part of the website, mm -hmm. you know? So if you have like a site sponsorship or whatever it is, you know, you can do like, basically you're displaying an ad and you can, it, there's ways around it, of course. Um, and I'm sure as if more and more people do what I'm doing and you're doing, then <laughs> the, the sites will get more aggressive because no one wants, no one on the, that's making money on this wants this stuff to ever come to a close. Yeah, I just wish there was a more honest relationship we could have mm -hmm. with the people who create content. You know. Yeah, 
Because I would the, pay. I would yep. pay monthly for this through, you know, like what is it worth to Google that you've, it's hard to say because it's, mm -hmm. it's not just access to Paul's data. It's how Paul's data works in the wider scheme of data that they're offering, you know, but is it worth $5 a month, $20 a month? You know, what, it, what is, what's, what's the dollar amount I can just give you and have this go away. Right. But they, I don't, I don't know. The problem is that then it, it's so yeah. complex <clears throat> because it's like you visit five different websites and you are putting, let's say $10 in the pot. Let's just make up a number. Well, yeah. how, do, how does that <clears throat> revenue, let's just say it was a hundred percent distribution across those sites. Yeah. How do you determine? Cause one site would be like, look, we have $10 million in payroll. It cost us X dollars amount of more than you spent on Paul's site. But on Brad's site, you spent five yep. more minutes. Yeah, so yeah. who, like it just like there's no there's no way that's going to end without World War Three starting. Like I know, it's... and we don't we don't have a lot of data to, that we can look at as outsiders. The the one thing I can think of that provides a tiny bit of insight into this is Spotify every quarter announces their earnings and they explain exactly how many subscribers they have that pay and how many that don't and what the revenues are per paid premium subscribers versus non paying ad supported subscribers. And I guess the way I would put it is, without knowing the numbers off the top of my head, but writing about it every single quarter, is that Spotify's premium customers are far more valuable to the company than their free subscribers. Mm -hmm. And it, it's probably not a one-to-one -one thing. I mean, they have you know some number of both and a good percentage of them pay. The paying people in some ways probably subsidize the non-paying people. But it's very clear that the ad-supported model is just doesn't pay. It's just, it's, it, it pays a little, you know, I don't know what our numbers are on our site. I mean, I, I, maybe I could find out actually, I have no idea, but I mean, people who are ad supported are generating almost no income. And on the flip side, they're being really annoyed all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's such a terrible business model. It's awful. It's awful. Awful.